Welcome to Overwatch. This time, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So the gameplay footage in the background, I'm not even looking at at the moment. I can't see it. I'm just going over the comments you guys posted on one of my videos on the, the Patch Notes McCree Hog video, where I asked you guys to put down stuff that you found in the open beta weekend that you were struggling with, and like new player oriented thing. How is that? that open beta experience that you guys are going to have when you're going to be going up against a lot of new players as well which I think is really going to help and that's going to be a big deal but it's going to be really cool and so many people came out and posted comments in that thread they're super useful they're great to read because like, I read them and I think oh well, of course I'm having problems with that but it doesn't occur to me as an experienced player that hey yeah okay maybe this needs a bit of explaining or maybe there's a bit of small advice I can give that just makes it a bit easier and simpler to learn. Now by far the most common one I see is how do I deal with Bastion? Like, how, how do we get through Bastion? And this applies to all static defenses. Any defense that is oriented around Bastion and Torbjorn, especially, you've got to play smarter. Because what will happen is you will run right into them and they will kill you. And to me, the answer to this question isn't so much, how do I, how do I beat these guys? It's, the actual answer comes from the other way around. It's, how do I not lose to these guys? Because when you phrase it like that, it starts to suddenly become very simple. And the way you lose to them is by funneling into their cones of fire, funneling into where they can see you coming and where they can kill you. So if you have a team with a Reinhardt and a McCree and a Soldier 76 and you're trying to slowly grind through the front door of Hanamura, they're going to destroy you. If you have a team with Widowmaker, Genji, Tracer, um, maybe Winston, maybe D.Va as well, they can't suddenly deal with these threats coming from separate directions, they can't deal with the threats that are poking away at them and just nipping away at them, and they can't deal with that kind of thing. Now, a lot of problems come from Torbjorn especially. The one universal piece of advice I will give you is never push into Molten Core. You can do it, but the times you can do it, by the time you know, you know, oh, I can push into this Molten Core, you will be experienced enough at the game to not need my advice at that point. If you hear him shout Molten Core, back the hell up, because that level 3 turret does a ridiculous amount of damage, it's ridiculously tanky, don't fight it. Just get away from it. For Bastion, you are really relying on outranging him, so over a long distance, Bastion's range, uh, his damage drops off severely compared to people like Farah and Widowmaker especially. And you're looking at out positioning him, so you want stuff like Tracer is a very good option, Reaper a little bit less so, Diva is an excellent answer to both of these, but you have to have people working with you. If you're playing with a friend and they are um, relying on a Bastion for defense, my advice is to get the friend on Diva, uh, put up a defense matrix and then just start barreling damage during that two seconds, because Bastion cannot stop you. He can't do anything to stop you dealing damage during those two seconds. Other than that, it's just a matter of positioning, knowing the maps, and knowing how to attack, knowing like not to trickle in. So the one piece of advice as well, and this is going to neatly lead to the next one, and I'll probably do a video when I can at least, more in depth on dealing with Bastion when I have footage of going against Bastions, I imagine it's going to happen a lot during the open weekend. But it's going to go to the, neatly to the next point, which is the idea of trickling in. And this is going to happen a lot. Whenever you, like, this happens to everyone. All of us will have this problem when you play Overwatch. Well, you will die, and your instant reaction will be to hammer the end button and type in, Where the hell are you, team? WTF, I'm the only one on the point. And you've got to realize at that point, wait, was it the team screwing up? Or was it me? Because there's no wave respawns in Overwatch. You just respawn after 10 seconds. That's it. And then you'll respawn. And what happens to people quite often is they'll just run out and run to the point and then die. And then they'll do it again and again and again. There will be moments when you suddenly realize, wait, I should stop. I need to stop doing this. And just stand still or stand in a position where it's safe and not die. And the important thing then is to not die. Now this all feeds into the next thing, because one of the maps that they put in the open weekend is Hanamura, and Hanamura is difficult to attack into, and I noticed a bunch of comments saying, how do you break Hanamura point A, and then how do you break Hanamura point B? I will start doing map specific strategy videos at some point, like, I have strategies and heroes I like on each map, but Hanamura point A, I will break it down for you very simply. To break Hanamura point A, you need to do one thing, is to get rid of the tank at the gate, and then it get pressure on the point. Those two things happen, you instantly win. How do you do that? Well, McCree is my solution always to the gate problem, where what you do is you try and bait their tank, and it generally is a Roadhog or a Reinhardt. 
You try and bait their tank into poking around the corner, throw a flashbang and your team kills him. When that happens, you need to start pushing. You need to put pressure on. Of course, if they have a Torbjorn and a Bastion, you need to be a bit careful about where you're going, but you need to have pressure on. And this gets even easier to do when you have pressure on the point. When you have someone like Genji, Diva, or Tracer, use the flank route on the high ground to get through and get onto the point. And their job is literally not to even kill people, it's just to pull attention away from that gate. Because the moment you start doing that, it gets easier and easier and easier to push through. Once you are through, die, die, the easiest die. way to win on any control point map is to capture the first point and immediately steamroll to the second. Uh, just run in as hard as you can. If you have ultimates, drop them immediately, fire them off, get as much damage as you can, try and pick people up who are, aren't retreating, and try and take the point immediately. At least try and take one third of it. After that, Hanamura especially struggles because the, the three pathways into the main room are so split up and so divergent that it's very difficult to get into. So what people start doing is you'll have like two people going in over the balcony and then you'll have Reinhardt just trying to run in through the front door and then you have someone trying to go up the right hand route and it gets very complicated and very difficult. The first piece of advice I'll give is never ignore that right hand route. The route that goes up the stairs and takes you to the high ground that can also lead you behind the point in a very reliable and easy way. Like You'd be surprised how many times you can just run through that area and get onto the point. And if you take control of that area, amazing. Like You, you suddenly win. You will win if you take control of that ground. If you're just going in through the two more forward facing routes, you're going to struggle. Other than that, breaking Hanamura is the same as breaking any other point. Get one or two picks and then push. This is why it's so important too, and this is where I'll mention this as well. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to record it. I completely blanked and didn't record me doing this just to show you exactly where it is. But after you play through the tutorial, go into options, then go into, I think it's MISC, turn the kill feed on, and you can also play and wear, uh, you can also play around with your combat reticles there as well if you want. But definitely turn that kill feed on as soon as you can. Because what it'll let you do is it'll let you see, okay, their bastions just died, their turrets just died, we need to push now. Because if you don't push, they'll just set up again and everything you've done will be for naught. That's the important thing of attacking. You know, this person's died, this person's died, we need to push. And we haven't lost anyone. We outnumber them, we have ultimate advantage, probably because we've just got some kills, so we have more ultimate charge. Let's go in, let's do it, let's finish the game off. And that's at least how I approach attacking. I look for picks, I look for when people start dying, and then you start really putting pressure on. You knock them back, you know, it's like uh, judo or something, you know, you knock them off balance, and then you go in for the throw. You don't try and just immediately throw them because you're just gonna, like, you haven't displaced them in any way, and it's just not gonna work, and you're not gonna get as much effect off it as you can. You've gotta sort of give them the nudge first, and then go for the push and go for that killing blow. Now the, the big thing that a lot of people struggle with as well, and I totally get this, I struggle with this even now after god knows how many hours played of Overwatch. Swap in heroes. When do you swap hero? It's incredibly difficult to say. Now what I always do and what I, the habit I've got into is whenever I die, I press tab. And I just look at our team, I look at their team, and I look at the stats in the bottom left corner, my stats. You know, am I highest on damage? Am I highest on eliminations? My highest on healing if I'm the healer. And then I start comparing it to other matches that I've played. So I've got enough match experience now where I can say, okay, at this point, if I have 5,000 damage, I'm doing really well. Or if I have 2,000 damage, okay, I'm really not doing as much damage as I should be. And that comes through experience and time and knowing about where you are as sort of a measuring stick for your own performance. But the biggest piece of advice I'll give is when the game feels frustrating, when it feels like, you know, oh man, I've just died three times in a row doing the same thing. Why? It's probably time to change hero. Like that's, that's to me, the, is the biggest indicator. Whenever it feels like you're just bashing your head against a wall, and it will on Hanamura especially, when you're just, you know, mashing your head against the wall, Hanamura, Temple of Anubis are buggers for this. Try swapping. Other than that, uh, just look for anything which is, like, Overwatch has counters in it, but they're more soft counters but some counters are harder than others. So for example, if you're playing Farah and they swap to Widowmaker and Soldier 76, it's time to get off the Farah. 
like you won't be able to do as much as you could do with another hero just because those two heroes are so good at keeping you out of the sky you probably want to consider okay i need to dump my ultimate then swap from fire similar to if you're playing torbjorn for example and your turret is broken the enemy team is pushing and pushing and pushing and applying huge amounts of pressure probably time to swap to a tank same with symmetra you don't have time to set up you don't have time to build up probably time to swap to something else that can just immediately fight out the box so to speak one person posted that they had an issue with map knowledge. Like, how do, how do I know the maps? The best way to do that is just play. Like, watch a lot of videos helps, so watch my channel because you'll learn all the maps and I will start doing, I think, more map-oriented strategies as well. I'm talking about why I like this pick and this place on this map because that's something I have developed over time. But if you want to just get familiar with the maps, learn, like, rather than tell you, okay, we'll just go into empty maps and explore around, let me tell you what to look for, okay? Look for where the health packs are. Look for where the flanking routes are, if they exist. Look for the different ways to get high ground advantage as well in this game. Look for where the spawns are relative to the point and where the defenders will come from when they come to defend the point. That will help you sort of put an idea of the map's flow in your head and where, you know, people will be at what time. So if they're coming out of the spawn, they're going to be in this area and I need to keep my eye on that. And if we get some kills, then they're going to be around there and I know where they are. If I'm in trouble, I know there's a large health pack this way. I know there's a small health pack this way. I know which one I can get to and how to get to it. It's that kind of knowledge that really helps sort of build up. If you really want, you can open up uh, games with bots. Like the bots are fairly basic at the moment. I have no idea if they're going to be improved by launch, but they're very basic, but they should still help you get an idea of okay this is the layout of the map this is where I want to be this this is about where it goes but don't worry too much about the specifics of the map because you will learn them in time there isn't that many maps where you'll feel overwhelmed and the map pool as far as we know is going to stay relatively static at least for now so you'll learn them you'll pick them up in time uh, people also struggle with team comps and like what you know what hero works with what and what hero works with who. I will be updating the, the sort of the cheat sheet thing I made. I'll be updating that and putting an updated version up for the open beta just so people have a reference for that. Um, but in general, like go watch the video I made the easy to learn hero picking because that still very much applies. It's still very very true. And that's something that's also going to come with time. What I recommend is, you know, if you guys don't have a tank, play a tank. Tanks are more fun than you think. If you don't have a support, play a support. Just give it a try. If you don't like it, fine. If you are playing quick play, don't be surprised to have matches where there won't be a tank and won't be a support. And this leads on to the next point. You will inevitably have matches where your team comp is not ideal. No one is changing. You're stuck playing Mercy and no one has swapped to a better hero and it's all awful and it's terrible and everything's going wrong and you're super frustrated and you just want to tell everyone someone pick a goddamn Reinhardt because we're getting shit on by Widowmaker and someone pick this and someone do that because Junkrat's killing everyone and I can't heal everyone and there's a Genji on me all the time and oh god it's so annoying those games will happen they will happen inevitably and part of Overwatch is kind of accepting that and accepting that yeah there's going to be matches where things are kind of out of my control. My advice in those matches is to just play to the best of your ability, learn what you can from them and then move on. Matches in Overwatch last 10 minutes. 10 minutes of your time. If there is a match that is going really badly it's probably going to only last 5 minutes. And if you really, really, really don't like matches with bad team comps Practice your heart out in quick play, go into ranked as soon as possible, play a hell of a lot of ranked. As you get up the ladder, I imagine team comps will get better and better and better as you go with more try hard players, with more players who are better at the game and better at figuring out their team comps, and then just play that because people will take that more seriously, people will take picks more seriously, and from even the beta, like the time we have with the ranked ladder and quick play, people were already saying things like, well this is just quick play, it doesn't matter that much, and honestly, it doesn't. They're not wrong in saying that. Now it is frustrating to lose and it's frustrating to lose because you know people are stubborn and not changing hero which is something that you know is a part of the skill set of the game but you're just gonna have to learn to cope with it unfortunately. You can't control all five other people. Also big advice if you've got a couple of friends play with them. You would be amazed at the ability to control two other people on your team and say yeah maybe we should pick this and this or you know maybe you should swap onto this and just be able to say that to them and have them respond is really nice. I also saw a bunch of questions like, uh, how do you deal with Zarya, for example? And some of those went on to other heroes, how do you deal with Reinhardt, how do you deal with tanks in general? The easy answer to dealing with tanks is McCree. 
It's always going to be McCree. McCree's flashbang and then right click onto a tank is insanely good. McCree is the, the number one tank buster superstar legend. Dealing with Zarya and dealing with specific heroes does fall in more into the permit of those hero specific guides and it will be too much to cover for all 21 for this video. So I recommend going and have a look at uh, Easy to Learn Zarya because I think I do talk about like stuff that you need to watch out for with Zarya. Uh, Zenyata is also a really good pick by the way for tank busting. I also saw questions like, you know, how do I deal with Mei? The answer is simple actually, like I have a friend who hates Mei, she absolutely loathes everything about Mei, can't stand Mei, can't stand playing against Mei, goes into a massive rage at the merest sign that there is a Mei around. And what I want to explain to her, and what I want to explain to anyone fighting against the Mei, is that Mei takes about three weeks to kill you and it's a slow and excruciating painful death, but pretty much any other character, if they're an offensive character, at that position, at that point, they would have killed you immediately. They would have killed you way faster. May's strength comes from positioning. Like, if you are in a position where May can hit you with her slow, then you have already screwed up somewhere. Or you've got one of the million escapes. And that's really how you deal with May. You outposition her, you try and force her into positioning where she's not as strong as she normally is. You try and force her into fights where maybe she's fighting two people at once. And so she can't just free someone and stand still and shoot them. She has to deal with these two threats at the same time. She's very survivable, but she's not very threatening on her own unless you are on your own and you are sort of caught with her. And that's how you deal with Mei, basically. You just got to avoid her until the position shifts into your advantage and then capitalize on that. And where that doesn't sound incredibly useful, if there's a Mei barreling down on you in a choke point, but the fact that, you know, you are one versus one against Mei in a position where she is strong just shows that you've already kind of fucked up. One thing I also saw a lot of is people struggling against Widowmaker. And honestly, I've seen people who are level 200 struggle with a good Widowmaker. And the answer to a good Widowmaker, the answer to a good Widowmaker is a better Widowmaker. But very rarely, incredibly rarely, will you have one of those available. You'll have people who think they're a better Widowmaker, but they're not. And the thing with Widowmaker is that once you set up and in position and comfortable, she will just start dominating your team. Now, how do you beat Widowmaker? It's actually very simple. You pick Reinhardt. It's literally that easy. You pick Reinhardt and then you have your team stand behind you and you, she can't do anything. She she just falls away. She doesn't do anything. She can't shoot through Reinhardt's barrier and suddenly she becomes less of a problem. You also can pick Winston and just jump on top of her and kill her. Winston's role in higher level play is literally to sit on Widowmakers and occasionally sit on Genji and Tracer and that's literally what Winston is for. It's that simple. You just jump on her and deal damage to her. You send a Genji to go and kill her. I want to try and nudge people out of the trap of thinking that the only answer to Widowmaker is another Widowmaker, because it's just not true. And honestly, 9 times out of 10, the best option is just to pick a better tank, basically. Pick Reinhardt, pick Winston, pick something with a big barrier, and then just grind forward, and suddenly she has to reposition, she is forced into more awkward positions to do damage, and she can't stop you. Just round up, I'm going to answer as many sort of short questions as I can. So, for example, someone posted that they struggle with Junkrat's ult because they were maining support. The thing with Junkrat's ult is you will land the maps and you'll know immediately which route Junkrat is taking with the ultimate. So you'll hear him shout fire in the hole and you'll know that it's going to come from this flank because it's just going to go up the wall and it's the safest route for him to take with it. So you know where it's going to come from and hopefully the rest of your team will as well. And they'll put, a lot, and they'll put enough damage into it to kill it immediately and get rid of it. And there's also a few people saying like, I don't understand why people don't play support more. And yeah, me too. But I think part of it was just because, you know, you only had two days to play the beta. Not even two days, I think, during that stress test weekend. And what happened is people really want to play the characters that they're super excited about playing. And let's be frank, most people are probably more excited to try and play Widowmaker, Genji, Tracer, Farah, Reaper, those kind of characters, than play Lucio and Mercy. So I think people just really tunneled on the characters that they were super hype in playing, and when the game comes out you'll see more people experiment, and hopefully more people will just play a bigger variety of characters. And I think that would be really cool to see people have the same kind of experience I did, because when I started playing, I did not think I'd like Zarya. And I really like her, I really like playing her. And I just experimented around, like, I didn't think I'd like Mercy that much, but now she's definitely my favourite support, and I just love playing the shit out of Mercy, and I'm perfectly happy to pick her now. And I think everyone's going to have that with one or two heroes. There is enough heroes and enough variety where you will have a couple of surprises and figure out, hey, this is actually really cool. I really like playing this character. Don't fight it when it happens. Like, if you find yourself not liking the character you thought you'd like as much, and you find yourself liking someone else, go with it. Like, there's 21 heroes. They're all fun. They've all got the place in the game. You can find it. That being said, don't tunnel onto a single hero. For the love of God, you'll be so frustrated 
especially when the the counter is picked or when the soft counter is picked i still really don't like the term counter in overwatch it just doesn't make that much sense to me and i think the final thing i'll cap off this video with is someone put uh, a lot of time in writing a comment that basically said you know one thing I started doing was set up milestones for myself, and I think that guy is absolutely spot on correct. When the game ends, keep an eye on the stats you've... Keep an eye on your career best and the stats you've left behind. Try and compare it to other games you've had, and try and think, you know, as McCree, was I doing my job? Think about at the end of the game, because you have a good 20-30 seconds at the end of a match to sort of process. Take that time to think about, okay, what went wrong? What went right? Where did we struggle? Was it the team's fault? But not so much was it the team's fault, just could I have done better? Where could I have done better? Was my damage lower than it average is? Uh, was my damage higher? Was my eliminations relevant? Were, was I killing the right people at the right place at the right time? That kind of thing. Just keep assessing yourself, keep processing, you know, where can I improve? Where can't I improve? And to me, that's, that's the beauty of this game, because even though it's a very simple game in a lot of ways, and there are places in the game where you know there is a lower skill cap so Winston for example will never have an amazingly massive high skill cap compared to someone like Widowmaker or Genji or Hanzo but there is constantly places where you can find okay I can improve in this way I can improve in this way and it's it's so important to just keep trying to do that and to me like part of why I play games part of why I love playing games is because they give you space to do that reflection give you space to sort of think where can I find where can I find self improvement? Where can I find betterment? And that's a big draw for me in games, and that's I love sharing that as well. And that's part of you know the core drive of this channel is to hopefully share some of that information and share some of that knowledge. And otherwise, just have fun with it. Overwatch is a game that creates amazing moments again and again and again and again. It does it so thoroughly, so consistently. You will have games that are just mind blowingly cool, or something awesome will happen. You know, Zarya will fire an ult, and Hanzo will fire a dragon through it. It's awesome. The enemy team all dies. Celebrate those moments, enjoy those moments, and have fun with the game. Look forward to seeing you all in open beta. Toodles.